Hey guys, how's it going? Soulful Lockpicker here. In the video I have for you today, I'm going to be going over how you can make a gel hand sanitizer at home. It can be a very frustrating thing when you're not able to buy it at the store. And what I'm going to do is just try to teach you how to do this in a few quick, easy steps. As you can tell, this makes a really nice consistency. It's nice and clear, and it's plenty strong and works very well. Without further ado, let's get started on how to make a gel hand sanitizer at home. Alright, so let's get started on how we can make our own gel hand sanitizer at home. What we're going to be doing is making a 500 ml batch and we're going to fill up one of these bottles you see right here. So in order to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list in the description below everything that you need to get started because I would hate to see you get started and be missing something. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to be going over some of the supplies as they appear. So what you see in front of you here is going to be a 600 ml beaker. It's marked up to 500 mLs, which is the perfect size because we make a 500 milliliter batch. Below it's going to be one of those magnetic bar stirrers. These are really cool because they make the little vortex in the solution. I will have both of these linked in the video description below if you'd like to check them out. But if you do not have them, you can hand mix, but it does make it a little bit more difficult. But before you get started, you just want to make sure that everything has been cleaned out and is ready to go. So the first part of this video is going to be going over how to make the liquid hand sanitizer first. The liquid hand sanitizer has the advantage of being very easy and quick to make, but it does have the disadvantage of being able to fall out of your hands and land on your floor, ruin the varnish, and just be a little bit cumbersome. So what I'm going to do is let's get started with how to make the liquid version first, and then we'll go over how to turn it into a gel afterwards. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is have some alcohol. You're going to want to have alcohol that's 95% alcohol per volume. This is an ethanol Graves grain alcohol, which is 190 proof, and this is the exact strength that I'm going to want to have. You do not need to get ethanol. You can get isopropyl alcohol, but you just need to be able to get what's available to you. So in order to make this 500 ml batch, we're going to first start off by pouring approximately 445 milliliters of the grain alcohol into our beaker, and then we're going to be able to get off to a great start. So I'm going to pour that for you right now. So I'm going to pour this as close to 445 mLs as I can, but the marking does stop at 450, so I'm going to get just as close as we can. But this is going to be more than strong enough in order to make an adequate sanitizer. This is going to be about 85% strength, and the recommendation is 70%. So we're just going to slow down the pour here just a little bit, and that's just about right. All right, so now we have about 445 milliliters of our 190 proof grain alcohol poured into our beaker. So now what we're going to be able to do is let's turn on our stirrer and be able to get the solution moving. So we do not want to just put alcohol into our hand sanitizer. We're first going to want to dilute it with something. So what we're going to need to do is use some distilled water. You just want to get some really clean water. I have some distilled water from the store. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pour 20 milliliters of the distilled water and then you're going to pour it into your solution. So the distilled water is important because you don't want to have any of the minerals that it's in the regular water. That's going to help dilute it and bring our alcohol strength down to the correct strength. Now, the next thing we're going to need to add is going to be some hydrogen peroxide. How this works is what it's going to do is it's going to help clean the solution just in case you have a contaminated beaker, batch, or anything. This does not help with cleaning your hands, but it does help with making sure your solution is as clean as possible, and it's recommended by the World Health Organization that you add this to your batch. So the amount that I'm going to use is going to be 20 milliliters. So I'm going to pour that for you right now. And now that we have 20 milliliters poured, we're going to add this to our solution as well. The next step is going to be we need to add some anhydrous glycerin, which you can see here. This acts as a humectant, which means it's going to help your hands from drying out. This is a really great addition to the hand sanitizer because it can make it have a less drying effect. So the amount you're going to need is going to be 15 milliliters. 
You can see how syrupy this is and it's quite sticky, but once it's diluted into the solution it works quite well. Alright, so we have our 15 milliliters poured. Now we're going to add that into our solution right now. Now I'm just trying to be careful that I do not contaminate my solution, do not want to put my hands in it, just want to try to keep this as clean as possible. So now that that is all mixing, this is exactly what it takes to make the liquid hand sanitizer. So if all you want to do is make a liquid hand sanitizer, you can stop here, add this to a bottle, and you're good to go. But one thing people like to do is add an essential oil just to give it a little bit of a better smell. The ethanol that I added doesn't have the strongest smell and doesn't last too long, but my wife appreciates the bergamot, so I always add that in for her. So for me, I found about four drops of the bergamot essential oil works quite well. So got one, two, three, four, and that's going to mix in, and that will give a really nice scent. Now that we have our liquid hand sanitizer mixing and ready to go, how are we going to turn it into a gel? What I like to use is called Carbomer 980. This is a powder that you're going to slowly mix into the hand sanitizer. Once it's fully dissolved and you add triethylene, it will instantly turn it into a gel, and it's such a cool thing to do. So what I read is you want to use about 0.5% Carbomer, but with the exact setup I have here, I found if I use 4 grams, I get the consistency that I am looking for. So in order to weigh out the 4 grams, what I have is a little scale right here. I'm going to place my little cup right here, and then we're just going to zero that out. So what I'm going to do is just scoop some of this carbomer powder right in here, and we're going to weigh this out exactly. Three point nine five, just a little bit more, and then we'll be as close to four as possible. If we go just a smidge over, that's okay. All right, 4.03. All right, so now that we have our carbomer powder poured in this cup, this is the part that takes the absolute longest time, and you just need to be very careful. So what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to slowly introduce this powder into the solution. So what I like to do is just slowly tap it in. And this takes for me about 15 minutes on average. If you could buy, if you could buy like a fine sieve or something, you'd just be very helpful. You just want to try not to get too many clumps. All right, so we're really making some progress here. We're just slowly introducing the powder, and as you can tell, we are starting to empty out our container here, and we're doing a really good job at just trying to slowly tap this in. Just remember that patience is a virtue in this, and if you do it right, you're going to get a really nice, clear, thick gel, and it will be worth it. So let's just keep doing this, and then we're going to get to the next step. So we're about 15 minutes in, and we almost have all of our powder mixed in. So we're just going to slowly tap the rest in. So what I like to do, once I have all of the powder mixed into our solution, is just to let it continue mixing for about 15 minutes, just to really make sure that all of the clumps will start to dissolve if you were not too careful. But if you do not have time to wait, you don't necessarily have to do this step. But the longer you wait, what I have found is the more it dissolves, the clearer the gel, and the better the end product. So I'm just going to finish mixing the rest of this powder in, and then I'm going to put a really nice plastic wrap on the top of my beaker because alcohol is very prone to evaporating quite easily and I do not want to lose any of it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to place this plastic wrap. I'm going to let this mix for about another 15 minutes and I'll be right back. All right, so we've been letting this mix on full blast for about 15 minutes now and we're ready for the next step. So what we're going to need to do to turn this into a gel is use our triethmaline, also known as TEA or TEOA. In order to make the carbomer powder suck in the water and be able to hydrate, what we need to do is bring the pH from acidic to more basic. 
In order for the carbomer to work, you need to have the pH greater than 6.0, and the triethylene is going to fix that for us. So what we're going to need to do is to straw up a very, very small amounts. So when I have done this with my setup, I use this 1 ml syringe, but for you, you may just have a dropper, and I'm talking it might just be one drop, but as soon as you drop it in, you'll see the change almost instantly. One thing I can tell you about my setup is my stirrer is not powerful enough for once it becomes a gel, so I will need to do a little bit of manual mixing. But what I'm going to use is about 0.15 milliliters of triethylene, and that is going to turn this into a gel instantly. So I'm going to have my triethylene ready. I'm going to have a spoon that I cleaned off to do some manual mixing, and I cannot wait to show you how instantly we can make a gel. This is such a cool process, and I am so excited to share it with everyone. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just put our 0.15 milliliters of TEA right into the solution, and just watch this. All right, it's in. Just like that, we have a gel. So now I just need to do a little bit of manual mixing just to make it completely mix in. This is going to get a really thick gel out of this. This is so cool to see it just turn into a gel almost instantaneously. So if you're able to be very patient and mix your carbomer powder in slowly, not get too many clumps, you're going to get a really fine gel and it can be very rewarding. I cannot wait to share this with you once we're able to get it into our container. So I'm just going to give this a few more stirs. I'm going to turn my mixer off. And let's pour this into our final container. All right, so I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit. And I have the soap container that I washed out and properly labeled. And now we're going to pour our gel. So we'll see how thick this is just while we're pouring it. So we're just going to pour this nice and slowly so we don't make a mess. But as you can tell, you can see how slow and viscous this is. This is a really nice clear gel that we're pouring into this bottle. So what I have is one of these child safe magnets for my cabinets and I'm just going to hold the stirrer right in place here. I'm going to continue to pour the rest of my gel right in. And then you want to leave a little bit of room at the top so that your dispenser is going to have some room once it is going to be displacing the gel. And now this gel is pretty thick. You may need to take your clean spoon and just scoop the rest of the gel into your dispenser bottle. All right, I do not want to overfill it, but I do want to try to get a little sample on the spoon and then we will get a sample on my hand as well. So let's just see what we can do here. So if you can see, that is a really clear gel. So let's uh, put the dispenser on. We're going to have to prime it a little bit just because there's going to be some air. So what I'm going to do is let's just squirt this back into the bottle. Okay. Let's put a little bit on my hand. And just take a look at that. That is some really clear and thick gel. That is something that we were able to make together. It's something that you can make at home when you're not able to buy it at the store. And this is just a really cool thing to do. But I just want to say thank you to everyone that was able to check out this do-it-yourself today. I think making a clear gel hand sanitizer is a really cool thing to do. And it's really not that hard to do once you get the hang of it and you have a simple recipe. To follow. But either way guys, this is all that I have for you today. This has been my do-it-yourself on how to make a clear gel hand sanitizer infused with some bergamot. This is a really fun thing to do. I just want to say thank you to everyone for checking it out. 
If you guys have any questions or suggestions, as always, please drop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking this out, and I hope you all have a great day, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.